So today I'm gonna be installing my three inch ready lift on my Toyota Tundra. Uh, it's not gonna be a video to really cover the full install, um, but it will definitely be a video as a before and after. And right now we have our 33 mud tires on. These are the red dirt road mud tires. They're 33 by 12.50 or 20 LTs for light truck. And it's on the stock suspension. It's at the stock height. Only rubbing was minor rubbing with the front mud flaps. Uh, if you know the Tundra, there's a front mud flap at the front bumper and then a front mud flap at the rear of the fender. Quick update, got the two front wheels off. They're jacked up, being secured by two three-ton jack stands. Also have a uh, secondary jack underneath uh, that's uh, pretty much in the middle. Uh, just a, it's not really applying any pressure or height to the vehicle, but it's just there, you know, as a extra security measure. So what I'm gonna do is remove this puppy here this got these Phillips that go down here uh, so you got two bolts one bolt here one bolt right inside there and I think is roughly I can't really show you guys that one but one here uh, let's see so you got one here and one here so there's three in the back um two bolts in the front and then you got the phillips which is roughly one two three three phillips um i like to use the jack to kind of catch it and balance it so that way while you're bringing this down it won't come you know falling down on your face but this is needed to get inside there and put the uh you gotta put the differential drop Looking at this, we got one, two, three, three in the back. Uh, what's this? Two screws in the front, and then your three Phillips screws with washers. That's also in the front. That's all been removed, and this puppy is nice and loose. Uh, Jack is currently holding it, so let's go ahead and lower it down. Oh, so. Alright, I'm gonna have to move this jack out the way in order to get her out. Cause I see it. I see it's on the it's on the clips. Here at the back. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get this jack off. And I might have to jack it up a little bit, but just kinda wanna go in. So right there, right there in the back is a clip. It's a metal clip. There you go. All right, so that's a metal clip. And if I move it. So you're supposed to pop it out. And it, it goes all the way down to some other sides to have it. So I'm gonna move this jack out the way and try it. I might have to jack the truck up a little bit more to get enough ground clearance for this thing to swing down. This is our under body protective cover. So these are the hooks. As you can see, that hook is twisted. Um, let's go right there. Uh, so what I found, I didn't jack the car, the truck up. Um, I would highly recommend that you do. It'll be just much more simple to kind of finagle this thing out. But what I ended up doing is pushing up. I used my hand, I just did push up and then I use my other hand to kind of get one out. And by getting one out, which it, you know, bent some, uh, it allowed me to pretty much um, get the other side out. Thing first is we're gonna take our Sharpie here and we're gonna use this to mark our alignment. 
um, that's on the lower control arm. So basically, by unloosing the lower control arm, we're gonna throw off the alignment. So before we do so, we want to mark, mark our alignment so that way when we re-tighten re the control arm, we can kind of get it as best as aligned to before. However, we're still gonna have to get a realignment done because we're increasing the height of the vehicle. All right, this is our alignment mark that's on the body. So I'm gonna mark that if I can. All right, it's a long, <laughs> it's a long mark, but uh, you guys kind of get what I'm coming at. Um, I had to pretty much take this uh, sh Sharpie and just rub it up on my uh, rubber glove and that allow it to uh, bleed through. So that's good. All right, so we did this side. We're just gonna go around to each side and just make our marks. And once we have that marked off, then I can uh, begin lowering it. So I'm gonna get that marked off and then I'm gonna show you the next step. All right, guys, I'm on the driver's side. I'm having a hard time trying to gain access to the nut on the low control arm. Uh, there's a nut inside, right there. Right there. It's a pain in the rear to get that. Um, as you can see, my impact gun is way too big to fit in between here. Um, I have a breaker bar and a cheetah bar, a jack bar, and it's not enough space underneath to do it. So just having this uh, bolt unloosened, which you guys can see here, it allowed me to lower my control. So as you can see, I pretty much um, just removed the bolt for your steering link, stabilizer bar, that's the steering link that's going to your stabilizer bar, and unloosen the two bolts. There's one, two bolts here that pretty much holds this ball joint and pretty much attach that ball joint to your assembly here and remove this bolt and it allowed me to get this out so right now this is out uh, all I need to do is just go up here remove the four screws there and then I could just pull this out I got this jack just to secure this way because I don't want to stress out my axle it's a, a 14 millimeter it's the one with the flex, flexible head, an extension. Got it from Home Depot for like $34 for this whole thing. Four nuts off. Got my uh, fly head, well, my uh, rubber hammer to pretty much catch this when it, you know, dropped. So now I'm gonna just take two hands and grab the sucker off and feed it through the bottom. Blue and red dots, um, that represents that this is the driver's side. Uh, and this, it pretty much states that uh, this is the outward side. Um, also on the top, it states out. So as you can see, out. Which is gonna match with this line here. There's two lines, one at the top, one at the bottom. So it's gonna be out. I put some Loctite around these threads and I'm gonna get it tightened up. I'm gonna use the original nuts and then for the top I'm gonna use the manufacturer nuts right there. You know the reason being is because sometimes the thread is different so you don't want to cross thread your stuff. All right, so I have a flathead in the bottom of our shock. Uh, a lot of people call this the eye of the shock. Uh, pretty much, I just stand on it. Two uh, feet stand on. I uh, got my uh, 14 millimeter wrench, and I'm just pretty much turning it while I'm standing on it. All right, so this is the next day. It got late. Had a... Uh, um, a bit difficulty with uh, getting the bottom bracket up. 
Uh, also, I started the installation of the sway bar uh, extension brackets, but I gotta take it down, get the jack to hold it, and put the sway bar links on each side, passenger and driver side, then reinstall the expansion, which is right here. And then that way, it'll, it'll help me to realign. So I'm gonna do that. Let's start on the sway bar links, uh, drop it down, get them reinstalled, pop them back up. Um, once I get that started, then I'm gonna uh, use the jack, secure the front differential, drop that down. Um, I'm not gonna show a video of how to do it because it just takes too long, just way too long. And I'm trying to get this truck, um, trying to get the front end done and then knock out the leaf spring expansion blocks so that way I can take it to uh, the llama shop before they close. All right, doing the uh, differential. It's a pain in the rear. There's a nut at the top. So I got my wrench to hold the nut at the top. Can't do it with your hand. 